Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to tell you why the Rolex Submariner isn't the best diving watch. And that's why we're going to talk about five things a diving watch must have. But before we start, let's do a quick wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Rolex Seadweller reference 126600 because it's the best diving watch in my personal collection. But now let's dive right in. In the age of diving computers and other digital devices, very few people still use diving watches for their original purpose. However, they remain among the best-selling watch types today. Why is that? Is it because they are so fun to fiddle with? Perhaps it's because they have so many features and thus they feel you are getting more watch for the money. It's probably some combination of the two. With diving watches, what you see is what you get. These timepieces are as robust as they look and feel. This combination of durability and impressive water resistance mean you can wear these watches without a second thought. However, not all diving watches are created equal. Some only mimic the design without any of the other specifications. Others lack some of the features found on true diving watches. At this point, you're probably wondering, if I want a watch I can actually wear on dives, what do I need? What constitutes a true diving watch? Luckily, we've come up with a list of five things a diving watch must have. We'll also take a look at why the Rolex Submariner isn't necessarily the best diving watch, at least as far as our criteria are concerned. A bezel that can only rotate counterclockwise is perhaps the most obvious and definitely one of the most important features of any diving watch. Before beginning your dive, simply rotate the bezel until you've aligned its luminous triangular zero marker with the minute hand. This way you can track how long you've been underwater. Since the bezel can rotate in one direction, you cannot accidentally lengthen your dive time and at worst can only shorten it. While the unidirectional bezel is standard today, this wasn't always the case. For example, early Rolex Submariners have bezels that can rotate in both directions. Around the same time, Blancpain patented the unidirectional bezel design found on their 50 Fathoms diving watch. It would take some time for Rolex and other manufacturers to adopt this more secure feature. Some companies take safety a step further. Models like the Omega Pro Pop feature a button you have to press before you can operate the bezel. However, this massive timepiece is geared towards professional divers and not necessarily designed for daily use. Water-resistant watches are robust and can be worn without worry in most situations. This explains why so many timepieces both depth ratings of 100 or 150 meters, that's about 330 and 490 feet, despite having little or nothing to do with water. Of course, water resistance is all the more important for diving watches. Interestingly, most diving watches far exceed the needs of recreational divers who rarely dive beyond 150 feet. Instead, manufacturers craft these timepieces for professional divers who regularly work at depths of 650 feet or more. Models like the Tudor Black Bay can survive such depths and watches like the Omega Seamaster 300 and the Rolex Submariner are at home some 300 meters or roughly 980 feet. While the Submariner is the most famous diving watch and thus often considered the best of its kind, it represents only the tip of the iceberg in terms of water resistance. Both the Tudor Pelagos and Breitling Super Ocean have ratings of 500 meters. That's about 1640 feet. And the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean is resistant to 600 meters, or around 1970 feet. Watches for deep sea diving are in a league of their own. One example is the Omega Ploprof, which is rated to 1200 meters. That's some 3900 feet. There's also the Rolex Deep Sea, which has an official water resistance of 3900 meters, or 12795 feet. In fact, during tests, it survives depths of 4,875 meters. It's just short of 16,000 feet. You don't always need a screw-down crown to achieve a certain level of water resistance. Some watches with depth rating of 200 meters, that's 656 feet, lack this feature altogether. There are even some Omega Speedmaster owners who wash their timepieces under running water or wear them in pools. And these models are only resistant to 50 meters, or about 160 feet. However, only a screw-down crown can guarantee that no water will penetrate the watch's case. Furthermore, these crowns feature seals that also protect the watch against dust, shocks and other jolts. Thus, timepieces with this feature are more robust than the competitors. 
Rolex, who has always led the field in terms of water resistance, creates especially secure crowns. For example, triple crowns have seals on the crown itself as well as within the crown's tube. You can find this mechanism on models like the Submariner, Sea Dweller and Deep Sea and even on other professional watches not meant for life in the water, such as the Daytona and the GMT Master II. One feature that's unfortunately not found on all diving watches is a quick band adjustment mechanism. Sure, most bands can be adjusted or switched out before a dive, but nothing beats a band you can easily slip over your wetsuit and adjust in only a few simple steps. Even more importantly, this mechanism is also practical in everyday life. For example, on hot summer days, when your wrist expands, it enables you to easily lengthen the bracelet or strap without any special tools. One of the best designs is Rolex Glidelock system. You can find this on the Rolex Submariner. This technology allows you to lengthen the bracelet up to 20 mm in 2 mm increments. Furthermore, its sleek design integrates perfectly into the Submariner's iconic clasp. Other manufacturers offer their own practical and visually appealing solutions for diving watches. Models like the Tudor Pelagos even outdo the Glidelock mechanism. Tudor's technology automatically adapts to its environment tightening as the wrist shrinks and loosening as it expands. However, this system puts functionality first, so its design is less suited for everyday life. Long-lasting luminous material on hands, indices and bezel zero marker is a crucial detail on any diving watch. Light quickly fades only a few yards under the water surface, making watches harder and harder to read. Early on, companies used radioactive substances such as radium or tritium to illuminate the watch dials. Since then, these materials have been replaced by non-radioactive alternatives like superluminova or chromolite. However, the principle remains the same. The material charges when exposed to light and then glows in the dark. Initially, it glows quite intensely before slowly fading. Even so, it still lets off plenty of light to tell the time in complete darkness. As always, some companies won't settle for the bare minimum. Instead of painting only the hands and indices, these manufacturers also coat the bezel's numerals with luminous material. One fine example for this is the Tudor Pelagos. And there you have it. That was our list of five things all diving watches must have. Whether you're exploring the ocean or simply tracking how long your pizza's been in the oven, diving watches have all sorts of practical uses. What do you think? What are your must-haves for a diving watch? Let us know in the comments below. Before you go, we will making a big announcement on our YouTube channel soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and enjoy your watches.